Hi guys, this is Andrew Parr and in this video I'm going to show you how to manually look for uh, basically uh, malware injected code that could be causing your site to be listed as a malware site with Google. So in the previous videos I've showed you how to add a site to Webmaster Tools in Google and I've also showed you how to get the details of what Google considers to be a malware code injection. Now if you have a look these are all page names on a site that I've been working with and this site uh, is hosted on HostGator. Now because it's hosted on HostGator many of the um, anti-malware plugins for WordPress simply won't work. HostGator restrict their resources to the point where you know they, they limit timeouts and everything like that and that is not a malware plugin friendly system so if you try to use anything like anti-malware or word fence or security or something like that most of them will pretty much time out and tell you go get lost now it's not the fault of the plugin it's actually all comes down to the restrictions set uh, at the php.ini level um, for hostgator now hostgator have quite blankly said you know if you run a, a basic account or a, a reseller account you can pretty much suck it up and deal with it so in this way I'm going to show you essentially how you can look for what Google is considering to be suspicious code and how you can remove that from your site Alright, so to begin, look, most of the places these malware will inject, if it's not going to be in the core WordPress files, which if you recall, um, you, you can download, you can go to WordPress.com, download the latest version of WordPress um, files and update your site that way. Just make sure you don't delete the wp-config file because that's the one that obviously connects to your database. You delete that, you lose the connection to your database and cause all number of issues. But other than that, all of the core WordPress files files except for that wp-config file can be replaced with the latest version from wordpress.com and it shouldn't you know cause any issues with your site it will of course overwrite any infected files as well now the other place that will, uh, malware will hide out are in theme files and in plugin files now the soak soak uh, malware that's been hit, hit everybody just in the last couple of days that can even write to uh, disabled themes and um, or deactivated themes and plugins simply because they're on the server and WordPress has access to those files they can actually infect those files so if you um, if you have any uh, premium plugins or anything like that you could always delete the files off your server and then upload fresh versions of that um, now to begin with we take into account that uh, that Google here says you know for the example this particular page here has a suspicious snippet now it only gives you a snippet which means it's only a little bit of what it's found but typically when malware injects into a page or into a plugin it usually does it all in the one area anyway um, but before we go on the hunt looking for malware what you want to do is protect your site now HostGator is absolute crap with uh, what it allows for resources so the very first thing you should do is install some form of a uh, a malware protection or a, a firewall or something along those lines now one in particular that's updated quite a lot that's not security security is one option anti-malware um, by Eli Sheets is another so by installing this one um, I've already got WordFence installed but it's not activated at the moment because the scans were running out of um, out of memory given it was um, HostGator. I particularly like um, anti-malware because it also has a, you know, a few comparable um, protection methods in there. Now you're not installing this for the scanning ability, you're ins installing it to protect you from future attacks which is just as important. Um, so once it's installed you don't have to actually do anything, it should be automatically set up to um, to protect your site. You don't need to run scans or anything like that, that's not why we're installing it, we're installing it more for a firewall. You can get other firewalls like you know WP firewall, there's a few others out there if you search the um, the repository so you go to plugins and add new look for ones that have a hell of a lot of five star ratings um, and a lot of downloads simply go for the one that's popular it's usually updated the most and there's a lot of people who are, are pretty happy with it um, okay so that aside we're now going to have a look for where this malware could be on your site so if we go back here we know it's a JavaScript um, that, that Google's particularly not happy about with this site so what we're going to do is we're going to look for a word that's unique we could either go for the IP address but in this case I know that in page is not, an, not a common word so I'm just going to copy in page now what we're going to do with that is go back to our site 
Now, because it's listed and it gives us a hint, Google really get, does give us a lot of hints. If we have a look at the name of the pages, they're all pages that are up and running on the site at the moment. So we know it's either in an active plugin or an active theme. Now, quite often, um, these guys who, who create these malware systems, they just target the active theme uh, more than anything, but they also will use plugins to stay resident. So we go to Appearance, and you can go down to Editor, and the Editor will actually allow you to edit the active theme files. Now, when you go into the Editor section of the Appearance, it'll tell you the theme over here, just in case you know, you've got lots of themes. Um, and you can go down through these different files, but usually it's a file that's affecting every page because they want the maximum exposure to the internet. So they'll target things like page template or post template, um, single page, uh, single post down here, I should say. Um, but where I often start is where they often start, which is the header. The very first thing it loads in the page, and the reason they put it in the header is A, there's a lot of JavaScript hidden up in the header, and B, it's also the very first thing to load on a page when, the, um, when your web browser goes to it. The foot is usually the last, of course. So knowing that um, Google's told us that this code in particular, the bad code, has the word in page, once we've clicked on header over here and it's loaded it up over here, we can simply hit Control F for find, and then just type in, uh, I think it was in page. And if we type it, it goes straight to our offensive code. And you'll have a look, and it's just ahead of the body tag. So it's the very last thing in the head. And the head code adds it right there. So that forward slash head means the end of the header. And I happen to know this click events thing, that's one of those domains that's just continually pummeling people's sites. So in this case, I know that that whole line there is not part of this theme and henceforth a load of crap I can delete. Um, now you'll notice that the script tag opens and if you follow it along, you know, text JavaScript or the address, blah, blah, blah. And then the forward slash script is the end of that script tag. And then just in case that ever gets detected and cleaned and notice that Google in our snippet, we only saw that first one. It follows it up with another one to some Malaysian click events site, which I happen to know is nothing to do with this theme. And is it quite a common one for this particularly um, this so -so, um, malware. So we just delete that simply like that and hit update file. Now what you've just done is you've essentially cleaned that line out of the, um, the theme. So if you go to any of the pages that Google's listed, you shouldn't be able to find that in page reference if you're viewing the up-to-date version of it now. So we'll go back to Google Webmaster and it says, okay, this page here, this article writing service page, it says is one of these pages that's got things. So we're just going to open that in a new tab and it'll load the page up. So you know, there's obviously some plugins that have been disabled here because East Store looks like it's disabled. So we're going to right click and view page source and it'll open up a window that looks just like this. Good old Camtasia's doing its own mass magic right now so we'll just drag that down so this is the actual code view of that particular page and you can see up the top says source of and then the URL so now we're just going to hit the control F like we did before and this time we're going to search for in page and we get to in pay PA and a phrase not found so we know now that we've cleaned that particular offending code from the page now, if you really want to be, you know, absolutely sure, you can go through and, and, you know, so we open up the suspicious. So we know that we've cleaned that out now. So at this point, we could go through all of the things that Google's found, and it's got the whole list there. And you can scroll down, and, you know, so you could go through one by one. The other way you can do it is click the Download All Samples button in the Security Issues. And you go, how do you want it? I'll take it in CSV, thanks. Um, so it will send you a file. In this case, I'm just going to open it up in uh, Notepad. Okay. So by opening it up in Notepad, so it says undetermined malware. That's quite normal. But if you scroll down, you'll see in page all the references that it says at uh, that in page one. Now, you'll notice that it didn't have a single mention of that Malaysian site. It was just simply because it was so common uh, to add one script after the other in this case. So because I've cleaned that all out now, um, I can open up any of these URLs. So, you know, I'll close this off. Go back to um, this one here, for example. And we'll copy that. And we'll open that in a new tab. And 
All right, so there's our page loader. We hit Control F and we type in in page and again, it's gone. So at this point, we can pretty much say, yes, we've re removed all of the offending code from the site. Now, you may want to go ahead and check your plugins, but simply, look, Google's very, very good at detecting malware because it prides itself on search results and it doesn't want to send people to malware-infested sites. So if you go download all samples, and you just make sure that it's the same type of thing over and over again, then this is a pretty easy fix. So at this point, we can come through here and we click, yep, I've fixed these issues, request a review, and you said uh, I you know, sourced and removed all offending malware injection. Something like that. Doesn't mean you could probably write in a different language. I don't even know if a person reads this or this just automatically cues a bot. Who knows with Google? You never do know. But anyway, you, you kind of let them know that it's all done. Uh, comma and added future protection. Now that's of course the firewall, which I'll finish fixing up after this video. Hit request a review, and that's it. So that's doing it manually. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's not a single malware plugin on WordPress that will run happily with the default, you know, cheap crap throwaway uh, HostGator accounts that a lot of people have. Now, if you happen to know there is a plugin that works, malware plugin that works rather well for um, HostGator servers, by all means, shoot me a message or add a comment below this video. I hope this has helped if you're stuck with a HostGator video, uh, HostGator server, and, uh, and it's given you some idea of how you can clean it all manually. Um, once you've submitted your request, it will say this, and it'll say request in process. You leave it about a day. I've seen it often update within a couple of hours. So, um, and that will get rid of that nasty big red, this site has malware thing, and your visitors won't run away screaming. I hope this has helped you and have a great day.